All right, thanks for joining y'all. Uh, it's uh, August 8th, my daughter's birthday, as it turns out. Oh. <laughs> I just remembered. <laughs> now I sent her, <laughs> I sent her something already. I took care of that. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, so thanks for joining. Um, I have general, you know, general topics here today, but I just wanted to, so mention from last week, I'm, I didn't publish the recording yet. I've not forgotten. It's going to go on Telegram so you guys have access to it. Uh, I do sometimes like to break up the video. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that oh. yet. Um, but at least I'll put the whole link, I mean, the whole video in a link on Telegram. It might show up on my other channels and platforms in, in parts. So we'll see about that. Uh, anyways, so what, what I want people to look at is aceofcoins.club because that's video membership uh, for all these topics. And I do make separate videos. Like today, I made two new videos. Let's see. Uh, they're going to probably be in the LLC strategies. And I'll just explain br briefly where those came from. So I add, they were short videos. I add a couple of things once in a while. And then uh, after that, I'm going to get into this, uh, you know, I just love talking about what happens when, you know, the Dow crashes. It's not a crash. Mm -hmm. But anyways, it goes down by a thousand points and then everybody, you know, get, feels sick. <laughs> you know, so um, I got some questions over uh, the, the last few days uh, on one was uh, W9 certification. I know it sounds so mundane and pedantic, but I, I have to just cover this stuff. And the other was an EIN application. So I want to remind everybody that a W9 certification simply is for one purpose. Well, maybe two. It's to certify the accuracy, the correctness of an EIN that's been assigned to a taxpayer, an LLC. And don't get scared because I called it a taxpayer and it doesn't file returns. It's okay. Uh, and you're passing off the liability of reporting correctly onto the payor. That's what you're doing with the W-9. So you, just keep in mind, just by you know, checking the box saying it's an LLC and then putting the letter P in there and saying it's a partnership. And then you have a note there that it's a disregarded entity. None of that matters. All that you care about is that the W-9 is certifying the accuracy of the EIN. All right. And then, so it doesn't change your tax treatment. In other words, it doesn't create tax classification, no matter what you say, no matter what you tell people, you, you can tell people that your LLC is a sole proprietorship or disregarded. None of that stuff matters. What matters is whether or not you file a return and what type of return or how you report the income, which can be any one of uh, several dozen ways, many, many different ways. Let's say a dozen ways, mm -hmm. right? So that was the W-9. And so my message to, it was a client. And I just said, you know, remember that you're just passing off the liability of correctly reporting and you're certifying the accuracy of the EIN. None of that stuff matters. And then on the EIN application, the only thing that's really important is that the uh, government assigned the EIN to the company with your proper designation. So if I have a company called My Company, LLC, and I apply for the EIN and I get an EIN approval letter that says EIN is approved for my company without the LLC at the end, I got to start over and do it again. It's so important that the EIN be assigned to a company that's designated as a company in the proper designation, LLC or trust or whatever it is, C Corp, whatever, Inc., because when you go to the bank, the bank's going to open the account accordingly. So you don't want your LLC to be a, a banking, have a bank account that looks like a fictitious name or a DBA or a sole proprietorship, because that's what it would be. Then you're personally liable for all the taxes, right? Or whatever else goes on. So be, be cautious about that. And it's not that you're personally liable. What happens is, well, it's like the bank is dealing with you as an individual then. It's mm -hmm. not, it doesn't, your corporation is not even involved, right? just because it's not designated properly. That's how important the LLC designation is. So the only thing you want to do, uh, be concerned with on the EIN application is that the EIN is assigned to the company and it shows that way. It shows the name of the company with the LLC designation, okay? So th those are two things. There's a third one too. And again, it gets into it gets into a bit of, um, uh, you know, it's property rights. So we have property rights over our identifying information, so our names and things like that. So this one gentleman, he said he was a victim of identity theft several times. And so maybe someone, maybe someone who knows him and they're, you know, maybe deliberately trying to make his life difficult because that's kind of unusual, three times identity theft. So he's trying to get all his name, his name, all the appearances of his name off of the internet. And he's before he's registered companies, naming himself as the member and whatever owner of the company. And that's public records. 
I'm not sure what the procedure is to get public records removed or changed or sealed or something like that. I'm sure there's some kind of procedure, but his problem was that that data was being picked up by a private company that was republishing it without terms. So somewhat it was making it available to everybody, put it that way. And in fact, it was the company's mission statement to do so. <laughs> so yeah, he's asking me, what, what can I, what can be done to remove this information? And I said, well, I'm not sure about the, the state, the secretary of state aspect, but when it comes to someone collecting that data and then repackaging or relisting or reselling it or whatever they're doing with it, <clears throat> they will always have privacy terms. Now, I'm I'm explaining this. Um, I'm explaining this in in the sense that when I'm talking about the privacy statement of a company when it's collecting your data, in his case, biographical data, his name, I'm talking about something that took place in the United Kingdom, right? This is how uh, prevalent this is. You can use it in the States. What I'm telling you right now works everywhere, in other words. So I looked at what he showed me, you know, he was asking me, how do I fix this? And I said, without even looking at his reference, which was the company that was collecting his information and publishing it, I said, there's got to be some way where the company has a policy that you can contact a certain office and ask for it to be removed for a reason. Uh, you can also ask for it to be redacted in some way. So sure enough, in the privacy statement down at the bottom, there's a few nice provisions. They were nice. They were written very well. And uh, they would accommodate him quite easily if he'll just ask. Mm -hmm. So I sent him a message back and I said, well, look down here. You'll see they're very friendly if you'll just ask them. And I'm sure that if you just tell them. Now, I said, here's a hypothetical. Let's say there isn't such a procedure, which there would be. But let's just say there's not. Or you try to get the data removed or something and they refuse. Well, in that case, the reason why you're getting it removed or changed or something is because you anticipate some sort of financial loss, let's say, for example, okay? So what you can do is if they want to insist on keeping your data, you can give notice to the company stating that the company is going to be held liable for continuing to report it once you've advised the company of the types of risk you're anticipating and have already experienced. That transfers notice. Remember I told you before, notice transfers liability. So if, you, if you're in that situation, just realize that with a notice, you can transfer liability and you would send that type of letter to the chief counsel for the organization, the attorney who's responsible for risk management, okay? That's why he's talking about risk management. If, if I show a company how, it's, if I show its attorney how it has financial risk and I'm trying to work with it, and it chooses to do nothing, well, then that person might end up getting fired. That's why, that's how this works, right? If you do something like that and you you express yourself correctly, it's not complicated, but you give the proper notice to the person who's re, whose job it is to reduce financial loss or risk, that person should take the right action. In fact, even if the policy is not very friendly, that person should advise his client, his employer probably, uh, let's not let's not open the door on this one. Let's just delete what he's got here and be done with it, you know? And a good attorney will do that. So anyways, um, I hope that gives you some ideas. That, you know, there's things you can work with. But again, I, I meant my note on today's call was to talk about, you know, uh, I, I'm not a forecaster, but economic trends. So I'll just give you some generalizations to, and you guys can go check this out. People ask me, John, what do you think is going to happen? I'm not a forecaster. So on as far as the economy goes, there is no such thing. But what you do have are, are things that are happening. For example, I'm seeing that there's going to be, in the near future on retail space, there's going to be a consolidation of retail uh, into distribution centers. So what does that look like? Your brand name retailer, tell me if I'm wrong, look in your town, it's going away. It is here in Orlando, they're going away. They have been for 10 years. It's just uh, accelerated lately. It's going away. And I believe it's going to be replaced by a distribution center that simply delivers products. And you can always get you can only get those products by ordering up through the internet, namely your phone. That that's the trend. What what do you do with that? Just look at it. Can you make money with that? Does that require real estate? You know. Does it require technology like drones, maybe, you know, delivery services, things of that nature? There's a lot of things that go go in with that. But uh, I believe that you're going to see probably in the short term by 2030, um, I think you're going to start seeing the big box brand name type business, retail businesses not be available or be much smaller. 
you're already seeing the shelf space reduced. You're not seeing items that would normally be on a shelf. They're not there anymore. That just comes down to merchandising, right? The merchandiser has to decide if something's worth putting on shelf space because shelf space is, is higher as the value is going up. It's easier to sell to somebody who walks in your store. So that's going to be at a premium now because they can, you can also sell it um, through internet. So they can avoid storage costs. They can avoid the need for employees. It goes on and on. That's a trend. So, but anyway, so this talk about the, um, whatever it was, AI taking over the labor market. Okay, that's happening. Um, the war, the looming war, uh, I guess it, what is it? Iran and Israel looks like. Here's my take on that. Okay, that's gonna happen, but there's there's no war between countries. That's all self facade. The war is between, between the countries and the people. And the governments want your land and they want, they want to monopolize the distribution of resources. Not, I shouldn't say resources. I'm saying, I'm going to say consumer goods. They already have monopolized the resources. Surprise. You guys can check on this. But as far as this, you know, this, all the news and it caused the Dow to drop a thousand points. If you go look at the big money, like BlackRock and these guys, the money didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. They didn't flinch. What does that tell you? They probably caused the news to be reported that way. So the chumps would sell and panic and they could buy. <laughs> they could buy more. <laughs> they just wanted a discount. So that's the limit of my, you know, trends. But I just think technology is coming uh, more and more. You're seeing more use of the phone. And this is this could be a bad thing, but it could also be a good thing. Um, it has its place, I should say. And then uh, we get into cryptos and taxes. My, my opinion on cryptos is that Almost always, it's a speculation. You're not really investing, and it's not really an asset. Okay, owning cryptos is not really an asset. Sometimes, if you're doing things like staking or whatever, or maybe you own a facility, or maybe you're leasing a facility to someone who's using it for server space for cryptos, like mining cryptos. Okay, that might be an asset, but just holding cryptos itself, that's not an asset in most of the time. Hey, John. Yeah. There are a couple of questions. I thought I'd just pop them in Mike, before you move on. Um, yeah. Are there any forecasters that, in your opinion, are worth following? Yeah, I like Jay Sterling. I like Jay Sterling and also Marius Landman in Australia. I believe he's in Australia. Marius Landman and uh, Jay Sterling, for sure. And then just a quick question. Um, someone wants to know if you can use your EIN for multiple LLCs. No, <laughs> one EIN per taxpayer. Be very careful about that. that. That of all things, you'll get in trouble for not doing for doing it the wrong way, whereas you will not get in trouble for not filing a tax return. But you will get in trouble possibly for using your EIN for different entities. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, putting your the car tag, you know, your license tag on different vehicles that are not. Yeah. Okay. So at first glance, the cops will say, "Okay, that's a valid registration." But if someone checks, you're in big <laughs> trouble. <laughs> So, all right. Yeah, so um, I would just check, I mean, forecasting, keep this in mind, the good forecasters. Now there's some There's some out there. I think Jay's pretty good. Morris is pretty good. Um, they'll admit, you can check. They'll admit that they're right about 40% of the time, which is huge. Uh, and the reason why they make a lot of money and they do is because they take the profits at the right time. The problem that most people have is they don't have the stomach for it, for taking the profits. So just keep that in mind too. It's one thing to buy cryptos and speculate on the price. You can do that, but have the stomach for taking the profits. Now, I've talked to so many people that say, I was a millionaire, but I'm not now. <laughs> you know, so but you weren't a millionaire. You just had a bunch of stuff you could sell, but you didn't. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. So good answer there. All right. So thanks for that, Moko. Um, I had a, a, a straggling case, a straggle, you know, the, we took out a bunch of cases for the phony pandemic, right? Yeah. But a straggler, there's Seminole, Seminole State College over here is telling everybody, if you're in the medical program or something, you're going to have to have vaccinations and whatnot. And then the one guy says by email to my client, he says, he goes, 
And some of these you can you can get a waiver, but then some of them are non-negotiable. <laughs> okay, what is that? What is that? You know, so so ignorant. But um, yeah, well, cryptos has. Uh, if you want to ask me about cryptos, cryptos is valuable in itself. I mean, I think that technology is very valuable, useful. It's very useful. It's useful for keeping uh, pr property records that you can't alter, you can't falsify. I think that was another reason why Reggie Middleton was attacked for Veritasium. I think, in fact, I think his technology made it to where <clears throat> it would be the single best technology for accounting for precious metals and uh, stock, anything, <clears throat> and, and commodities. And uh, I don't believe the stock markets or the government want that to happen because then you you can't have the paper markets in silver and gold, right? No one would want them. If you could if you could have some way to uh, account for precious metals and and verify that they actually exist instead of just taking some broker's word for it and he sells you he sells fifty ounces of silver or five hundred ounces of silver for every ounce in his vault, right? Wouldn't you want that? <clears throat> so, I think that technology that Reggie Middleton created. Was was preventing the banking system from imposing the dollar, the use of the dollar on on the, the blockchain. And once you get the dollar on the blockchain, you can do all kinds of nastiness. You can take people's money away fast. You can impose taxes on people's pets and electronic devices. You can impose taxes on people's equipment, things that use fuel. You can impose taxes not for income. You can impose taxes for what's called a, a carbon footprint which is total garbage. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing. I mean, we are carbon. So I guess, you know, if you're standing somewhere, you're making footprints and yeah, you're made of carbon. <laughs> so uh, anyways, so um, yeah. Cryptos are not investments. Oh, yeah. Just saw okay. that. Yeah, cryptos are not investments. You can ask the AI that. You know what the AI is doing? If you're not using it, there's ways of using the AI, okay? So you can use the AI in such a mundane way that it just is a lookup mechanism. It's a lookup mechanism, but you can also have it think critically, but it takes a while. And I think you need your own AI to do this. I don't know if chat GPT will do it, but all it's going to do is scour the internet very fast and give you information that other people said. Right. AI is not saying it. It's somewhere on the internet. Cryptos are the best investment for 2024, 25. If you search on that phrase, you'll find out where the AI got it from. You're using the AI as a lookup function. So just be aware of what, you know, when that's happening. Try to make it do some critical thinking. I've tried, it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. You have to think it through, but I have used it to uh, write some documents, which I'll share with you guys later, you know, when we get to talking on other stuff. Yeah, Moco and Ray, uh, yeah. Uh, but anyways, it's been very useful for me. Uh, and today I talked to V and we were just, you know, talking about generally our program called Strategic Life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I showed how to use the AI to have it write a contract to give you the option to buy some real estate. The purpose of that is to show you how to get financing. And then I explained how to use that same idea to buy a business, not just a piece of real estate. The future is crypto is crypt future of crypto. Crypto is going to be around. Crypto is the future. Just like gasoline, liquid fuels, that's the future also. Not battery technology. Um, lots of questions. Any updates on the FinCEN uh, BOI? Nothing new there. And is AI collecting your questions and follow-ups? Yes. If you're using AI, it is collecting uh, your your interaction, that information, and that's being used somehow. I don't know. I don't know by whom. The only reason that's the only reason why it's free. Mm -hmm. It starts out that way. Um, I am going to develop something. Uh, looks like right now uh, where I can feed it everything that I've ever done for thirty years. Wow! And I can not only have it think like me, but I can have it speak like me also, with my smart ass attitude and everything. It'll sound just like. Um, have you know. checked out the Mike Adams free AI system? No, 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 I don't know what that is, but uh, I don't know if you guys want that part of it. But, anyways. The smart ass part? Oh, please. The smart ass part. You <laughs> like that part? I'll make that an option. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally want that. <laughs> are there are there crypto predictors that you recommend? No, I don't. I can't do that. 
I don't know. Just it's good technology. Make it make it useful. If you're going to use crypto, make it useful. If you want, if you're tired of the banking system, use Monero or use Bitcoin on the dark web. You know, we have this technology is so fantastic. Programmable currency, ether, the Ethernet, right? Or not the Ethernet, Ethereum, Ethereum, right? You can make your own uh, coin too. Imagine make you can make your own coin for your family. You just got to have a way to exchange it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you, um, I do this on a regular basis. The, the the place to actually the still to do real transactions, large transactions, is through vault services, through precious metals and vault services. The big transactions on the earth are being done well. You, you do a settlement through uh, vault services. So the, the counterparties have a vault account with precious metals. They can even use cryptos these days. And they have a settlement. They have an escrow contract. And they do a settlement of the transaction. So delivery of goods and then release of funds through the vault service. And that transaction is conducted in a foreign jurisdiction. So what does that mean? No taxes, right? Something to think about. Okay, so you're so there's a risk to me putting my um, my hard facts, okay, the foundation of my research into an AI module, but I'm not doing it online, and I'm still going to retain the proprietorship of it. It's still mine, and no one gets access to it unless he pays through a subscription, and the AI is not available. It's on my own device. It's on my own device. So Your own AI it, pet. Yeah. I mean, it's really cool because I'm thinking the way this works is I can all day long be talking to my clients and working on cases and the AI will be learning, learning, learning. And I can also talk to the AI. I can call it on the phone. Call it on the phone and it doesn't forget. Y'all should be trying this out. Try one for yourselves. You know, you can do it for free. Um, the question is, if you conducted uh, in a foreign dis jurisdiction, there's no tax. Uh, okay. You can use that idea to avoid the tax legally. So I'm not going to get into all the, the different details. So. But there's all kinds of ways. The tax is the smallest risk. I mean, really, everybody wants to talk about it because I guess it's an unknown type of thing. Um, but there are other risks. Okay. I've talked to a few physicians this week. And so... Some of the risks are, you know, the state regulatory agencies. Uh, some of the risks are uh, patients who want to uh, complain in, in a frivolous way. So those could be those could be managed by uh, the contract. And also, you know, we use arbitration, mediation services, things of that nature to keep the matters out of court. So there are other types of risk. Uh, also, brand name recognition. Like if you're running a business and you, your risk is being sued, just the fact that your company's being sued might might jeopardize the credibility or the reputation of the company. I just I was just at a, a business just re today, and he was telling me that it was being sued over some stupid thing on the accessibility aspect of the website. You know how they have the website where it says accessibility and yeah. it's with handicaps, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And because they don't have it, the website suitable for the blind, they're being sued. And this is a person that's not blind. This person makes a living going around suing websites to do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's sad. I it's really, it's really abusive. But anyways, you know, so, you know, th there's all kinds of risk out there besides taxes. But you can have your own AI system and whatnot, but you, you can use AI to interact with people, especially in business. In fact, <clears throat> it could help you develop something to make money. So there's all kinds of things to do. So. Anyways, so just over an overview, generally, I normally talk about managing financial risk. And most people care about they're making an investment or they have cash flow in a business or something. And so I usually set up a limited liability company. It's really effective at managing risk. The reason why is because I can establish the property rights and in a, in a, I can change the way the liability floats around, right? I can change the property rights in the LLC and use the LLC to really uh, take on all the liability. And I can have it my way. Because I'm going to have the liability, I just want it my way. Uh, and so, uh, one thing you might, you know, if you want to do some research on it, the term would be a charging order protection. So LLCs will give you charging order protection, which allows you to protect property rights held in a company. 
Whereas I cannot do that by myself. And it would be very difficult to do if I just relied upon a partnership agreement. It can be done with a partnership agreement, but then you run into the risk of cost of litigation. If I use an LLC, my costs of litigation are almost zero. So while most of you are contacting me about taxes, my, my thinking is, how could you avoid cost of litigation? Uh -huh. Even in a debt collection. If I can do that, I beat everybody just about. And I don't say this to many people, right? So if I'm doing some work for you, if unless it comes up, I'll talk about it. But if I, my rule is, is this going to avoid cost of litigation? Is my client going to be able to use this to avoid cost of litigation in a worst case scenario? And usually it is. Sometimes it's the nature of the business where you, he won't. And so what we can do is uh, mitigate that. You guys have seen me do that before. Okay. Well, I appreciate the comments on these other ones. I'm, I'm glad you guys are looking at this stuff, but yeah, AI is the future. Uh, it, it's probably being used against us, uh, but we need to, we need to use it. It's just like the discovery of fire, the analogy I always give. And then I think in the near future, we're going to start seeing new technology. Like by 2030, I'm thinking we might just start seeing the, the FAA approve uh, drones, at least unmanned drones. They have, they have regular, a regulatory framework for unmanned drones right now. So if we don't already see it, we might see unmanned drones delivering products. Mm -hmm. We actually have some pretty cool inventions that give uh, a lot of power to the airlift feature of a drone. Yeah. Here's a question about LLC. If I'm the sole member of an LLC, can the IRS attach my personal debt to the LLC? That's a really good question. Um, Legally, yes. However, uh, just because the name of the LLC is kind of in the way, if someone's not paying attention, um, the IRS will not see that. So you could get lucky and not have a problem. But legally, they have the right to do that because your your interests stay the same as if you had no LLC. How do you mm -hmm. fix that? Anybody want to take a stab at that one? Get another member. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and then how do we how do we show that there's another member? Articles of organization. Amendment. Yeah. We amend them. That's as simple as it is. I've had several calls over the years. It doesn't happen very much, but I've simply told the client, amend your articles, file an amendment of the articles with the state. And I give them the language over the phone. And I just say, just add another member, make sure it's not your wife and you'll have charging order protection. And here's where this, we get into the cost of litigation. Once you amend the articles, it's going to discourage anyone from trying to get a charging order against your interest in the property, the LLC. It's going to discourage litigation because it's a dead end. Not only is it a dead end, but with an LLC, if you get a charging order against an owner of an LLC and he's not the only owner and there's an amount of money that you don't collect, your client will have to pay taxes on it. You know, if you're an attorney, you'll know that and you wouldn't be in that business too long if you lead your client into that type of liability when you could easily have avoided it. So it's, it's a very good tool. Right? I mean, think about it. If everybody was pretty good at shooting a gun and everybody had a gun, do you think there'd be, you know, less uh, physical confrontations with, you know, like muggings and robberies and stuff like that? Yeah. Probably less, right? Yeah. If we just that's have why, a law, huh? Yeah. That's why there's hardly none where I'm at. Everybody's packing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In Florida, too, is the same way. We're already I was, getting ready. Everybody's buying goose guns and turkey guns. When these drones come, you come out, we're going to shoot them down. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if they don't have permission, you know. Yeah. They could come they're around annoying here. drones. Why are, why are people doing that with all the surveillance? Cameras? If they bring you ice cream, maybe you wouldn't. But. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are people doing that with all the surveillance cameras? I've been saying that since. Like, That's what people need to do. That's what they're yeah. doing in Europe. We well, are, yeah. You know, there's, oh. there's a lot to be talked about, but Here's in Europe right now, they're, they're overrun. You know, in, in England, they have brought in so many foreign Muslims that they are running around with hatchets and knives and oh. attacking locals out of control. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. That's a bigger problem. Yeah. That's more of a the government's encouraging that. Yeah. You know, it's all the government. Yeah. What do you think, Mocha? What, what was it? Going? Well, it's just a question. Can a PMA mitigate this risk in the same way that a charging order protection can yes it can it's an innocent party but what it, it may lead to litigation because someone may want to investigate the pma on the premise that 
it's the same person that organized the company. So just make sure that if you have a PMA, it's, you know, you, you understand what you're doing there, but just know it is an innocent party. And uh, the whole system, the economic system, like Ray was saying earlier, the feudal system believes that everything should be an entity or it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So be prepared. In that yeah, case. it's a real closed system rather than an open system. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, that's why I do like multiple members. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's on its face. Okay. You got charging or protection. PMA, I don't know. It depends. See, PMA, there is a cost to investigate that. And most attorneys uh, are not willing to ask the client for money for that. Where I found that you have the biggest hassle with the cost of litigation where someone will investigate it is if it's like personal, if it's personal. Like for example, it's like uh, one guy uh, lent you or leased you a building and he's your cousin's brother's friend, you know? And how dare you not pay the rent Shame on you. I'm going to see you for all your worth, that sort of thing. That's they're just going to waste a lot of money. But if it's a big franchise corporation, they're smart enough to go, ah, eh, no, it's not worth it. Mm. So then, uh, would you explain what the point of a PMA is then? The PMA is to identify an innocent party. And I, I started using that in that name recently in the last few years uh, because it's easier when people don't have people to work with. And this is another problem people are working alone. And so I asked my client, do you have someone you can add in there? No, nobody trusts me. They think I'm running a scam. They think I'm a tax evader. Uh, so, okay, fine. Let's call it a trust or a PMA or something. So that's why I did it. And sometimes it's okay. But uh, really, it's nice to show the world that, hey, on the face, it's charging our protection. Can't argue there. No cause to investigate it. Mm -hmm. And then the follow-up question is, what happens if they do investigate the PMA? Okay, well, then the PMA needs to establish if, if it's if that's the case that uh, it's a family, for example, that it does exist, which is quite easy to do. Mm -hmm. And it would be embarrassing for the other side who undertook the expense to <laughs> realize that. But uh, the thing and the other thing is the the court would say, okay, no charging under protection. Here's your writ of execution against the company. And who's the owner? an innocent party can't touch them can't sue them it's truly an innocent party so it works just like charging under protection doesn't it you can get the writ mm. you just never you, you it won't attach to an innocent party so why would you chances are you wouldn't get the writ chances are the, the judge wouldn't uh, give it to you mm. so the innocent party works pretty well it's just it's not so uh certain that you would avoid cost of litigation Yeah, on that subject, somebody questioned about the FinCEN, too. You shared just before when you amend the article's organization, have five members, and it's below 25%. You, you really should. Group group yourselves together and, and set up companies, and one person do the banking, and the other four, let them use your name, and then you guys do it for each other. That's, um, a, real, that's a real nominee company. Yeah. Would you just define the term charging order for the group? Okay, um, a, a charging order is a judgment or a writ of execution from a judge. It's a writ. Charging order is a writ, a court order, permitting somebody to seize property. And there are conditions on that. So if there's a writ of execution or a charging order against an owner's interest in an LLC, that's exactly what it can be. It cannot be more than that, unless the LLC is a liable party, okay? So the charging order would be against one of the members of the LLC, and the rules are like this. The only time you can get the money as the creditor is when the a member receives money from the company. You can't reach in and take the money from the company. And as the member, as most LLC memberships go, that person has control over when he gets paid. So it's useless to undertake the expense of doing that. Mm -hmm. Plus, John, isn't it true that Okay, so if I was charging order protection on an LLC, if I'm sued and they get a judgment for 100K, that party has to pay the taxes on 100K, though they can never collect. Yeah, as soon as he gets a writ of execution and he doesn't collect on any portion of that, all or some, it's all taxable. Or that portion he didn't collect is taxable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. 
And someone's asking if someone signs an easement, how easement and house foreclosed becomes REO, how will that affect the seller's credit? Well, that's weird. That's like that's two weird, unrelated things. Uh, the seller, the seller's credit is not affected by a foreclosure. I don't understand. Uh, but if uh, real estate goes into a real estate owned, like the bank owns it from a foreclosure, remember, uh, an easement is not affected by the title. So who cares? The, the bank is to foreclose. The bank is, the the whoever buys the buys, buys the property gets to be, become the title holder. He's still under the easement. Nothing in the easement changes. The title's a, a different aspect of the property. I don't know if that, I don't know how that has to do with the seller's credit. Yeah. What happens if they investigate the PMA? Oh, you already answered that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who they is, but <laughs> investigate. I mean, that's for discovery, right? But why would you? Why would you undertake discovery? It's just so expensive. And yeah, you can just come in there and say, well, it's my family. Look, here's our latest family photo. <laughs> that's them. <laughs> Who's right. going to argue for that? <laughs> So could you talk a little bit about whether it's better to have multiple members LLC? Is, is that better than setting up as- I like multiple members. I like two people, minimum. Five is the best. <laughs> Notice I never talk about that because, you know, people don't do that. And uh, does any action need to be taken formally if you add or remove members to a PMA? No. You could- you could today say, oh, yeah, the PMA is my entire family. And then tomorrow say, no, nah, we're not adding Uncle Bob in there. Nope, he's not in the PMA anymore. Not Uncle Bob. Right? It's a PMA. And I, and I use family as an example. It doesn't have to be. It could be uh, everybody in your bowling team. It could be you and two of your neighbors. Right? It's a private association. Yeah, I mean, multi members, yeah. Uh, Pets as members of an LLC. Okay, here's an interesting thing. I shouldn't even tell you guys this. What am I doing? I'm going to create more. Tell us about the pets. I got to hear this. Okay. Is it rattlesnakes are okay? Pets are living beings. They have no rights. Pets are property. But they can have legal representation. They can. They can have legal representation. Like if somebody like leaves their uh, estate to a pet. You can do that. So it's really the estate where the pet's the beneficiary. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, guys, don't do this. But yeah, Fido could be <laughs> an owner of your LLC. <laughs> and, and, well, see, okay, so that's being weaponized because, say, for example, on the land grab, all this land grab stuff with these conservation groups and PETA and all, they are filing writs of habeas corpus into courts to have the cows released from bondage at Who's the branch. It's like these uh, PETA, and, oh, okay. uh, these other are animal those, rights. Are they, animal rights. Animals, okay, but animals don't have rights, so. NGOs. Yeah, is it working? Is it successful? No, no. but it, you know, it's, uh, it's all. By it's just time. to burn up people's money. But there is stuff like with endangered species where they try to like change the way you use land. In order, I mean. Oh, attorneys would just love to be able to have people, I mean, have animals have rights of people. Oh God! But then somebody's got to do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Say that. They don't contribute to the economic cycle like we do with labor, so they don't really have rights. How are they going to pay for legal fees? You know, they're doing it to destroy the ranch or the farm. Yeah, or the chicken of course. Farm. Same. Release the chickens. Yeah. They have. You know, you can't do that, and so the farmer goes broke because how, how can you release all the chickens with a, a rid of well, Why would corpus? you defend it? It's frivolous. I don't know. It's, I just was reading it. I don't know yeah. what, what the response was. I mean, really, a habeas corpus? Come on. <laughs> no, no. Come on. <laughs> so for everybody that doesn't know, a red, hate, red habeas corpus is release the body, you know, release the person, but not meaning a cow. A human, a corpus meaning a human being. It's not, a, yeah, an animal. An animal is property. An animal's property. Somebody's property. It's mm -hmm. either abandoned or claimed. <laughs> yeah, interesting. But if you, for that matter, why not just uh, set up a trust? 
just make sure it's legitimate, right? Make sure you have the trustee and the beneficiaries and make sure you have the authority and the trust corpus, you know, and whatever. Put some property in there. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, so I just, I just want to cover some basic things. I know it wasn't too elaborate, but... Uh, just there's some really basic things. You, you guys are working on anything? Anybody uh, look doing the Amazon website? Anybody having your own Amazon stores? How's it looking? Yeah, well, it's it's going along. Okay. It's taking a while to to really get all the um the stuff bought and sold. It takes a while to like you know get the store, you know, selling things. Yeah, I'm in that same. I'm I'm there waiting too. We we just paid a storage fee. So I figure, all right, now mm -hmm. we've got some things in storage and we can sell it. Mm -hmm. But well, we see advantage of that. I, I just ran into this. My wife is looking at some like uh you could build these houses in like two days. They're real they're tiny homes. Mm. There's a lot of suppliers of that, by the like, way. Like modular or small. Yeah, things. yeah, modular. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I liked them. They look pretty nice. And I said, Well, why don't you put it in the store? Well, let's sell it. Don't just buy it. You can buy it on Amazon. I said, put it in our store. She goes, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's kind of nice, you know, if you have your own store, you can sell yourself stuff or you can sell it to other people. That's another thing, you know, sell things that you're already spending money on. Sell it to other people. Yeah, except my understanding, what they're doing is they're they're getting products at a good price and selling them. And we don't really have any say in what those products are other than it's going to be like commonly used stuff. You, so can. Saying... you can put things in your store. Okay, yep. I didn't know that. I like to rely on what Amazon's doing because Amazon wants to sell things fast and so do I. And I go with that. But if I can add things to my store and hmm. maybe I want to no. yeah. Now the contract we so we, have. Can, we can sell oil of Olay and tiny houses. Uh, you can. <laughs> yes. I have to mend the comp you now the contract I've been offered does not allow that. They decide everything based on the top sales with oh. the algorithm and working everything. Yeah. Okay. So well, I can come it's, in. It's and negotiable then. Yeah, oh, okay. I would have to. Yeah. yeah, check your contract. Did see not if you can revise it or whatever, but yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. But uh, that see what that just tells you right there that the the person you're working with, the the, the joint venture partner, uh, you have a consistent interest because he wants to turn over the product on your site as fast as possible, and so do you. Mm -hmm. so fine, okay. Don't do something stupid like add a house, <laughs> you know. But I I would want to, you know. There's that? a I just got the contract today too, because it took a while to get it. And and I and so there's even Amazon charges a fee too. So when it comes from the warehouse to them, Amazon, oh. they hold it. And so now I understand what I used to see these big auctions and people would go to these auctions put by Amazon, pallets and pallets of stuff were being sold. But what happens is is Amazon will turn around and sell it at a reduced price or even just liquidate. Yeah. If you cannot sell it within a certain you know, if they do not sell it within a certain amount of time, they're not going to hold it. They can't. You're so, shutting them down. They can't. It's yeah. too big. I mean, it's too much volume. Exactly. But I think that's what's going to be pushing with their because they were the leaders in creating the biometric scanning Amazon. Yeah. The one they're using, and uh, I think they're the ones that are going to be pushing the drones, bringing you stuff. And, and depends on the part of the country you're in. Like in L.A., Santa Monica, and all that in L.A., they got these little drones that walk like a little dog walking around delivering stuff not I've that's what's flying yeah i've seen that one and uh, that was barking at that driverless one. cars yeah uh, yeah they had that too but of course that caused some wrecks and some controversy but yeah. but i mean like if i saw one walking down the road i would immediately run over to check it out in myself you know or if it came up to me i might kick it to the side or something <laughs> Or laugh at it, <laughs> or pick it up, yeah, throw it over. The whole to the thing side. is under video surveillance. They already know. Put it upside down and see if it can get back up. It'll be sitting there with his legs. But, <laughs> but it's more acceptable. So the so the tolerance for a lot of what we're talking about is depending on the region of the country you're in on what is accepted. For example, what might fly like right now? What's going on in New York down here? We'd be in war. Or what I saw in Maui when I went to Maui. Or, or when I was in California, because when I told them too, I said, you need to come to Georgia. You will think you're in a different country. We, we don't play that stuff here. Oh, yeah. Oh, here. yeah. You know? right. it's the same way with Florida. They wouldn't accept it there. Yeah. Well, they might in parts of Florida, but like around Tallahassee, 
right. and the panhandle. Oh, that's that's totally. Yeah, they would you know just bow up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good. So I'm going to end it for tonight, but thanks All for right. joining everybody. Hope that yeah. was interesting. And good I'll LLC uh, discussion, soon. you know, because everybody really, yeah. I think you've educated people very well that they should understand that how powerful of a tool, because there's a big misconception by Patriot groups also saying, oh, I can't use the LLC. It puts me in the system. But they don't understand. Yeah, they don't understand how it's to your advantage. It's it's there for your benefit. It's you're just getting indemnification from the state. You already paid for that. Why not use it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, it doesn't make you into something. But okay. Yeah. I've been hearing that for decades. <laughs> All right, y'all. Enjoy your All evening. Right. And have a good one. Thank up. you, John. Thank you so All much. Right. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.